had、um, Zoom auditions. After a couple weeks, I found out I had booked the project. After the teaser, and now the trailer of Avatar: The Last Airbender has recently been released, fans are going crazy about how accurate the casting is. Netflix found the perfect actors for all the characters. But seriously, how did all these actors get their roles? And why, after all the hype and craziness about the perfect casting, there's a serious and disturbing controversy surrounding Ian Ousley, who's playing Sokka. Mind you, it cost a lot of fans to rally just for Netflix to answer one controversial question, which we're going to tackle later in this video. And I promise you won't believe it, so keep watching. Avatar: The Last Airbender auditions and how the cast landed their roles. You're supposed to audition for, and said, "There's a note saying, just so you know, you're reading for Harold, but his real name is Ira."、Yeah. Then, then the parallel. Then it's、clicked. yeah. Then it's like,、oh, of course. Staying true to characters, Netflix's costume designer for ATLA, Farnaz Khaki Sadi, shared an image showing these big binders they used during casting. Over 130 actors were chosen for the show, not counting extras or stunt performers. See, Brian Konetsko and Mike DiMartino, the masterminds behind Avatar: The Last Airbender, may have stepped away from the live-action adaptation in 2020 due to creative differences. But their promise to stay true to the show's roots remains unbroken. They once declared that the live-action version wouldn't repeat the same mistakes as the 2010 movie The Last Airbender, which faced criticism for whitewashing characters. In fact. The Netflix live-action adaptation is packed with Asian actors, reflecting in its casting choices. Just like in the beloved cartoon, Ang is a 12-year-old, and rightfully so, the actor playing him is also a youngster. This smart move ensures that the actor won't age out too quickly over the show's many seasons. How did Paul Sun Young land his role as Iro? While being interviewed in a shopping mall, Paul Sun Young Lee revealed that he thought his audition for Iro was actually for a basketball movie. This little mix-up came about because the audition was cleverly disguised under the code name Hiro. You can just imagine Lee preparing for a sports film, only to find out he's stepping into the shoes of the wise tea lover Hiro. It was under a different code name, and I was like, "Oh, okay, it's weird." And it was a basketball movie, right? Right, and I was playing Harold. And a month after this surprise audition, Lee received a letter from the production team containing, "You're reading for Harold, but his real name is Hiro." That's a note. <laughs> yeah, that was on the sheet. I was like, "Huh? Oh, damn!" We can't argue that the production team struck gold with Lee. He embodies Iro in every way. Also, Ian Ousley, who portrays Sokka, seems like the perfect match too. However, his casting comes with its own set of whispers and controversies. So, what's all the fuss about? Well, you won't believe it. Keep watching. How did Ian Ousley land his role as Sokka? Did he fake his heritage? There's no denying Uzli seems born for this role. With his spot-on look and voice, he's the Sokka we've all been waiting for. But there's more to this story than meets the eye. After the announcement of Netflix cast for the show, fans went into full detective mode to uncover Ian Uzli's true heritage. Does he have legitimate Cherokee roots? Well, they found that Uzli might be enrolled in a tribe that's not recognized as Cherokee. Now, let's take a step back and think about this. Uzli shouldn't have felt the need to stretch the truth if that's what happened. Remember, the Water Tribe and Avatar is a fictional group inspired by the Inuit, not Native Americans. The key here is authenticity, not exact lineage. As long as the actor isn't fully white, like in the 2010 movie adaptation, and he doesn't look white, it's a step in the right direction. We need to be careful not to swing too far the other way. If Uzli has some Native ancestry, is mixed, and fits the character's look without being white, isn't that enough? Why are we digging so deep into his ancestry? It's about capturing the spirit of Sokka, not a racial purity test. But let's be real here. I hope these findings aren't true. What's your take on this whole situation? Bend your thoughts in the comment section below. How did Kia Wantio Tarbell land her role as Katara? On August 12, 2021, Netflix announced that Kia Wantio Tarbell, a 14-year-old of North American Mohawk descent, is set to play Katara in Avatar: The Last Airbender. And here's why she's a perfect match for the character. The water tribes in the animated show draw inspiration from indigenous cultures, especially the Arctic Inuit people. Think about it: indigenous cultures often don't get much spotlight in Hollywood. So by choosing Kia Wantio, a young actor with genuine indigenous roots, to bring Katara to life, Netflix is definitely moving in the right direction. 
This decision not only honors the source material's cultural background, but also provides a much-needed platform for indigenous representation. How did Gordon Cormier land his role as Aang? On January 9, 2020, casting began on the show, more specifically for the role of Aang. Netflix's logline and description is Aang, male, Asian. Lead character is 12, male, of East Asian or South Asian heritage. Aang is a typical 12-year-old boy, a bit goofy, a bit nerdy, restless in school, always eager to join his friends for fun and games. He's nimble, energetic, and quick in the schoolyard. Adopted at birth, he struggled with questions of how he fits in, but his loving parents have worked hard to make him feel accepted, and so he's grown up to become generous, kind-hearted, and cheerful. Fast forward to August 7, 2021, and the news we've all been waiting for rolls in. Gordon Cormier is cast as our beloved airbender. It's as if Gordon was made to be our real-life Aang. Just listen to his voice and you'll know it's true. Those birds are scary, dude. For me, it started with a bad day at the petting zoo. <sighs> Wait, you did? Yeah! How did Dallas Liu land his role as Prince Zuko? As for him, he said that he auditioned through Zoom and that he really wanted to be one of the superheroes of Marvel because of his involvement in Marvel's Shang-Chi. But he said that his destiny is to play Prince Zuko, which for him, and we cannot argue with it, has one of the greatest character developments. Furthermore, according to him, he's a big fan of ATLA, growing up watching Prince Zuko and now playing his role in real life is truly an unforgettable moment. Although it is really nerve-wracking because there is that huge fandom, and especially for Zuko, who's has one of the greatest, you know, character development like ever. How Miguin Fairbrother landed his role as Karuk. On April 6, 2022, another exciting casting call buzzed through the Avatar The Last Airbender community. This time, it was for the mysterious role of Dakota. Just like when Paul Lee auditioned for Iroh, the team used a clever disguise to keep the real character hidden. Dakota, character is male, 30s to 40s, of indigenous descent. A legendary warrior from the past, he appears as a spirit to deliver a warning to the tribe about the consequences of losing the coming battle. He has a soulful and melancholy demeanor, the result of losing the love of his life during a past war. Looking closely at the character details and ethnicity, it's clear that Dakota is actually Avatar Karuk in disguise. Remember Karuk? He's the Avatar who came right after Avatar Yanchen and before Avatar Kaioshi, brought to life by Yvonne Chapman. Karuk hailed from the Northern Water Tribe and was known for living life to the fullest, enjoying his celebrity status in a world without chaos. His time as Avatar was a peaceful era where he could bask in the joys of life. And weeks after that announcement, Avatar Wiki announced that Miguin Fairbrother is set to play Karuk. How did Arden Cho land her role as June? In February 2022, Arden Cho became part of ATLA's live-action adaptation, where she set to play the role of June, the bounty hunter. Now, fast forward to March 17, 2022. Arden Cho shares a fun update on both Twitter and Instagram, saying that she's in Vancouver, busy filming for this new series. But before joining the Avatar cast, Cho turned down a role in the Teen Wolf revival film on Paramount Plus because she was offered less than half the salary of her co-stars who were returning. How did C.S. Lee land his role as Roku? On April 26, 2022, C.S. Lee was announced to join the cast as Avatar Roku. This was a huge moment for all the fans who've been eagerly waiting to see if Roku would make an appearance in Netflix's live-action series. Remember, Roku is the Avatar who came before Aang. And come on, man! The casting directors really outdid themselves with C.S. Lee. He embodies Roku in a way that's almost uncanny. Just look at the details the shape of his nose, his eyebrows, even the way his lips are shaped. It's like Roku has stepped right out of the animated world and into real life. And after seeing the trailer, a lot of fans are saying positive things about it, hoping that Netflix will do justice. One fan in the comment section said, ATLA is my favorite show of all time, so I was worried the live action might not do it justice, but this looks incredible. I'm excited to binge it. Another one prayed, Please be better than the movie. Please be better than the movie. Please be better than the movie. 